Jazz, Movie, Fiction. Dawn of War Jazz served a sentry role alongside Prow, operating under the command of Lord Protector Megatron. In this role he seemed to liaise extensively with Optimus on the research sites of the scientific branch of government. Jazz was present when the Fallen's prison was uncovered on Cybertron. Following the assault of an alien race upon the planet, when Megatron and Optimus began to part ways over the course of their species, Jazz sided with Optimus. Even so, he stayed loyal to his oaths and when ordered to arrest Optimus for treason, did so, until it became clear that they had been betrayed and marked for assassination by Megatron. Jazz immediately joined Optimus in his fight for freedom when the Autobots were founded. Defiance 1-4 Jazz, Movie, Fiction, Ghosts of Yesterday Jazz, Movie, Fiction, Ghosts of Yesterday on board the Ark, Jazz was the first to detect the Ghost One's presence, and was later badly damaged in a fight with the Decepticons. After being repaired, he and Ratchet fought together against Barricade. Jazz easily stood up for the injured Ratchet, single-handedly fighting Barricade, Bonecrusher and Blackout, and escaping. Jazz, Movie, Fiction Titan Magazine's Jazz likes to keep his bodywork buff by externalizing his spark core force field in the past that led to him almost being killed when Bonecrusher almost tore out his unprotected spark. He only survived thanks to fellow Autobot Clocker, who was killed covering his retreat. Transformers Comic Issue 6 When the All Spark was launched, Jazz, Ratchet and Ironhide attempted to distract Megatron from pursuing it. They ended up attacked by Devastator and warped across space by a fold space weapon. Transformers Comic Issue 2 Jazz ended up on a planet that he dubbed, The Information Highway, a constantly morphing world with, the accumulated knowledge of countless alien cultures, condensed into some kind of sensory precipitation. He loved this world and the constant new experiences so much that he deliberately ignored Ratchet's homing beacon, wanting to stay here forever. However, the planet was alive and predatory, and ended up absorbing him into it. He fired off a warning buoy to stop others arriving, and only this led to Ratchet and Ironhide finding where he was and rescuing him. Transformers Comic Issue 6 Spoiler Warning Plot and or ending details for Transformers Comic Issue 16 follow. In an alternate universe, because of a lack of troops, Ratchet used a corrupted fragment of the All Spark to bring Jazz back to life. Happy to be back, he blew off the suggestion that death had made any impact beyond him wanting to live every day as if it was his last. Unfortunately, it turned out the corrupted fragment had led to Jazz himself being influenced. He paralyzed Ratchet and attempted to exploit Earth's apocalypse by selling the newly energon-rich planet to the highest bidder. His auction was interrupted by Dreadwing, who rejected an offer to join forces, and attacked. Ratchet, whose redundancies had kicked in, revived and managed to destroy the Energon field the auction was being held in. The resulting explosion proved enough to both force Dreadwing to retreat and give Jazz an opportunity to escape. Transformers Comic Issue 16 Jazz, Movie, Fiction, Transformers The Game, Console, Jazz, Movie, Fiction, Transformers The Game, Console, Voice Actor, Andrew Kishino Jazz, Movie, Fiction, Transformers The Game, Console, Autobot Campaign Jazz arrived on Earth as part of Optimus Prime's unit, summoned to Earth by Bumblebee. After taking on the form of a Pontiac Solstice, he met up with the other Autobots. His first mission was to distract Sector 7 and law enforcement units, which he did, buying his fellow Autobots time to escape. Jazz was then surrounded by Sector 7 SUVs and Decepticon drones numerous times, requiring Ironhide's help to escape. He then made his way to Mission City where he engaged Starscream, Blackout and two Dreadwing drones. In basic terms, what happened was he first fought Starscream and the latter retreated after a nice beating. The first Dreadwing drone appeared and Jazz made short work of it. Then Blackout attacked. Jazz sent him off and killed the second Dreadwing. Then Starscream and Blackout double teamed him. Jazz still beat them both. He killed Blackout first, then Starscream. Jazz was surprised that he'd taken all four down and began to celebrate, but the Autobots' victory was short-lived, as Brawl marched up behind him and caught Jazz's attention. Jazz sent an SOS to his best friend, Ironhide. Brawl beat Jazz down and as he was beginning to stagger in exhaustion, Brawl punctured his chest with his claw, extinguishing his spark. Ironhide arrived just in time to witness Jazz's death, and swore he'd make Brawl's death slow. 
Ironhide then fought through a horde of Decepticon units to destroy him. Note. Press left. Up. Down. Two. Left. Up. Right. At the new game menu. The screen will flash to confirm the code was entered correctly. Go to the bonus features. Then the Generation 1 option to use AG1 Homage Deco on Jazz. This does not change his appearance in the Decepticon campaign, however. Jazz. Movie. Fiction. Transformers the Game. Console. Decepticon Campaign Jazz. Movie. Fiction. Transformers the Game. Console. Decepticon Campaign Jazz arrived in Mission City with Sam and Michaela, taking the role of the defeated Bumblebee, where he was confronted by Barricade. After a brief chase through the city, Jazz engaged Barricade in battle, where he was defeated and killed. Jazz. Movie. Fiction. Transformers. Autobots Jazz met with the Autobots in an old junkyard. Setting out into the city, he retrieved a number of Sector 7 vehicles before running into Blackout. After a tedious battle, Blackout runs. Returning to the group, Jazz reports his findings, then Bumblebee gets captured. At H. Pover Dam, Jazz needs to plant a virus and try not to hit cars or military vehicles while driving. Then he fights a lot of military vehicles while he does a download. Then in the mission firefighting create a bot helps Jazz fight off Allspark drones. The whereabouts of Jazz were unknown whether he survives or dies fighting the Allspark drones. He becomes forgotten about until he's unlocked as a playable character. Jazz, movie, fiction, Transformers, Decepticons Much like in the movie, Jazz's big scene in Decepticons is his battle with Megatron. At the Hoover Dam, Jazz has set up several automated turrets and Autobot drones around the lower perimeter of the dam, preventing Megatron from escaping. However, this line of defense only works for so long, since the turrets only fire at airborne objects. Finally getting up the side of the dam, Jazz steps in Megatron's path, doing little more than trash-talking before Megatron jumps into battle. After a roughly equal fight, Jazz finally falls. Megatron then finishes him off and desecrates his corpse. But Jazz must have been hyper on Energon because taking Jazz over to the dam, he will jump into the water on his own. Jazz, Movie, Fiction, Transformers, 2007, Film Voice Actor, Darius McCrary, English, Tayton Kusunoki, Japanese, Torsten Michaelis, German. Jazz was part of Optimus Prime's unit, summoned to Earth by Bumblebee after the latter Autobot came to be in the possession of Sam Witwicky. After his protoform crashed through a baseball stadium, he investigated a nearby car dealership and chose a Pontiac Solstice hardtop as his vehicle mode. Linking up with his fellow Autobots in a deserted alley, Jazz greeted Sam and Michaela Baines as little bitches, stating that Earth seemed to be a cool place to hang out. He casually sat on the hood of another car while Optimus Prime explained to Sam they learned Earth's languages through the World Wide Web. He then relayed their mission to find the All Spark and explained how his grandfather's glasses were the key to its location. Soon after, as Sam looked for his grandfather's glasses, the Autobots attempted to assist by clumsily destroying the yard where they went. When it came to hide from the parents, Jazz had the easiest time blending into the shadows due to his small stature. When Sam and Michaela were captured by Sector 7, the Autobots mounted a rescue that saw Optimus Prime tearing the roof off Agent Simmons' vehicle. When the agents attempted to resist, Jazz used a magnet to relieve the humans of their weapons. After Bumblebee was captured by Sector 7 during the retreat, Jazz expressed his desire to rescue him, but was overruled by Optimus Prime, who didn't believe it possible to accomplish this without harming the humans, and so they should let them go. The next day, after Optimus used his navigation scanner on Archibald Witwicky's glasses, Jazz again commented that they could not leave Bumblebee to die at the hands of Sector 7 to become a human experiment. Optimus replied that Bumblebee would die in vain if they did not find the AllSpark, and when Ironhide asked if the primitive and cruel humans deserved to be saved, Optimus countered by asking if Transformers were so different in the past. Going on to explain what he saw in the humans, Prime declared that if it came to it, he would sacrifice himself to destroy the AllSpark, the humans should not pay for Cybertron's mistakes. Inspired by his words, Jazz and the other Autobots rolled out, filled with determination. On the way to Hoover Dam, the Autobots encountered Bumblebee leading a convoy of Sector 7 assault vehicles. Jazz and his fellow Autobots applied brakes and did a hard U-turn to join the formation. 
Entering Mission City, without Optimus, Jazz assumed the role of commander for the Autobots while the human soldiers tried to call for air support from their own forces, only to be attacked by Starscream disguised as a human F-22 fighter. The small Autobot fired his shield-mounted plasma cannon at Starscream, warding him off by blasting his left tail fin from the unprotected Sam Witwicky, a scene cut from the movie, and oddly, transformed back into vehicle mode after the explosion which crippled Bumblebee, destroying his legs. When Brawl began shelling the battle site, Jazz led the Autobot charge toward the Decepticon, speeding to the tank in vehicle mode, then transformed and hopped on top of the turret to distract the Decepticon from the humans. As Brawl also transformed, Jazz managed to wreck his left side rocket launcher pod before being tossed off. He then sped back to the battle, firing at Brawl, blasting his face open, effectively blinding him, while Ratchet sliced off the arm that Brawl used to chug his 10 liter Gatorade bottles. Brawl only liked lemon lime and fierce green apple. The battle was tilting in the Autobots' favor until the arrival of Megatron which was witnessed by Jazz, Ratchet and Ironhide. As Ratchet was not powerful enough to take on Megatron and Ironhide would be needed in the battle, the diminutive Autobot was forced to take on the Decepticon behemoth. Jazz attacked Megatron in order to cover the escape of several fleeing humans, but all he got for his trouble was being blasted by the Decepticon's fusion cannon. The Decepticon leader tossed him through the air, then stomped him with the crushing grip of his talons. Valiantly, Jazz defied to the bitter end, opting to injure Megatron rather than surrender. Jazz blasted Megatron twice as he screamed, You want a piece of me? You want a piece of me? Then Megatron, unfazed by the blasts, said, No. I want, that too, and he tore Jazz in half. He managed to keep Decepticon out of the battle until Optimus arrived, at a heavy cost. Megatron tossed Jazz's parts aside and engaged Optimus. After being separated from Sam Witwicky, Ratchet hurried to the almost dead Jazz, but his spark had already faded. In the aftermath of Megatron's defeat, Ironhide somberly handed Optimus Prime, Jazz's remains as Ratchet reported that he could not save their comrade, whom the Autobot leader eulogized. Transformers, Film, Jazz, Movie, Fiction, Rise of Fighter Blue Film Voice Actor, Jason Derulo, English, when formerly dead Autobots like Jazz, Ironhide, Ratchet, and others surrounded Optimus, Bumblebee, Hound, Drift, Crosshairs, Fighter Blue, Goldatron, Mountaineer, Tommy Duff, and Tommy's dad, the Autobots are very proud. Later, Jazz can be seen cloning the giant dog-like Decepticon Destroyer who transforms into a red 2017 Honda CRV in the Battle of New York City, and, after making the clone an Autobot, making it decapitate and kill a Toyotacon. And then the clone licks Jazz in happiness. Then, after Fighter Blue kills Fighter Black, the leader of the Decepticons, with help from Optimus parts armoring the now Autobot leader, Jazz and his new dog enjoy their new freedom, by happily sniffing the flowers in Central Park. Note. Despite his quite unambiguous death in the film, the packaging for the Target exclusive Jazz Redeco, below, claims he survived and was repaired by Ratchet, choosing new colors because the silver, scratched too easily. Michael Bay disagrees with this, stating emphatically, Jazz is dead. The bio on the Redeco is thus from a micro-continuity, 